All right, welcome everyone. Keeper Grace and Keeper Eric here today. Uh, we are outside in our butterfly garden outside the Katofer Animal Building, and we are with some of our monarch caterpillars. Uh, we have various ages of caterpillars in our little enclosure here. Oh, I was like, what are you looking at? Uh, so we have some clean milkweed in here that these guys are eating on. That's what you're watching him. He'll probably have that leaf gone by the end of the day today. Um, and then you can see these larger caterpillars up on the roof of this enclosure. And those guys, I bet they will start making cocoons either. I was hoping one of them would be in a cocoon already by this chat. Uh, we'll have to do another chat once they make a cocoon. So cat uh, butterflies lay their eggs on milkweed. That's part of the reason why common milkweed is so important for this species. Um, so they have five teeny, teeny, teeny little eggs. Um, and then these caterpillars, when they hatch, they are, I don't even know how to say how small they are. What would you say? Like a teeny little inchworm size. Yeah, an inchworm. Um, they look like a teeny little inchworm. And then they live for about like 10 to 14 days. And during those 14 days, um, those two weeks, they solely eat milkweed. That is their job, to eat milkweed and grow into a big caterpillar of the size that they have uh, up top here. So there are different stages of the caterpillar and they, they shed or molt their skin five times while they're a caterpillar until the, they reach those about two weeks. Zoo five to zoo four, him has access. Oops. Uh, um, all of her regular areas now. And there are five different stages. Those molts, there's five different stages um, of caterpillars. Once they reach about the size that they are up top, they, they go with into co a, uh, a pupil stage. And that's when you can see that's where these guys are. I think those four big ones on the ceiling are in the pupil stage right now. They're entering the pupil stage. So that means that they are um, attaching themselves to the screen on top. In the wild, they would just attach themselves to like the bottom side of uh, a milkweed plant. And then they make this J shape and then they start to um, like straighten and shed their skin for the fifth time. And that become, they become that green chrysalis that we'll have to show you guys again later. I was hope, like I said, I was hoping one of these four guys would be, uh, would be in a chrysalis already, but they're not quite ready. They're still growing. And so then once they become a chrysalis, they stay in that chrysalis for another 10 to 14 days. And the, after 10 to 14 days is when they emerge into that big, beautiful orange, white, and black butterfly that we all know and love as the monarch butterfly. Now, this time of year, are you going to try to get that little guy to, I no. don't know, he's lost up there. He's not big enough to be ready to. Your, your mom was wondering how big these were, like oh. a frame of reference. So that's my thumb. Yeah. What, they're like two, three inches, the big guys? Yeah. And they're, they're fat. Yeah. <laughs> don't crawl out. Are you trying to look for the ceiling? He's lost too. Yeah, shout out if you have any other questions about the, the caterpillars here. Uh, Carol remarked that we don't see very many monarchs anymore. Or she Correct. doesn't. Yes. So that is a part of the reason why uh, we have them all collected in this little screen enclosure here. Um, is because they are an endangered species. Their numbers are declining for a couple different reasons. Um, I think the, where did I had a list? Um, probably one of the biggest concerns, um, is the loss of milkweed. Like I said, the entire caterpillar life cycle happens on, um, a milkweed plant. Yeah, we'll walk over and find some. We can some walk over some milkweed plants, yeah. 
Um, and so, but however, it's it's right in the name, weed. A lot of people uh, take it out. It's a, they view it as a weed. They don't want it in their yard. And so they kill it. They spray pesticides or something um, to get rid of those weeds. And so loss of milkweed is a, a huge factor. Um, drought conditions in, in California and other areas, um, again, resulting in lower milkweed um, and reduced availability of that milkweed later in the summer affects these guys. Like I said, uh, insecticides and herbicide use um, in, in order to control insects and weeds affects their population. Overwintering habitat loss um, in California and Mexico, um, in those groves where these guys will migrate to is affecting their numbers. Um, and then just overall habitat loss in their overwintering areas in Mexico, mostly due to illegal logging that's happening down there. Now, what's also interesting about these guys is that we'll see monarchs throughout the summer. Um, those monarchs that we see up here in Illinois throughout the summer only live to be about two to six weeks old. Um, so they're constantly breeding throughout the summer. Now, these guys, these are the last... Um, what am I saying? The last like group of, of monarchs. So these will most likely be the monarchs that are migrating all the way down to California and Mexico to overwinter. So these guys will live about eight to nine months old, but they have to make that amazing migration uh, across the country. <laughs> um, so these guys will migrate down there um, and then migrate back up. No, they breed down there and then they migrate. Another, no, I'm getting mixed up. I'll be right back. Yes. Do they eat the leaves or the stalk too? Oh, I should have kept the little stalk. No, they just eat the leaves. Um, you can kind of see, um, sometimes they eat the whole leaf, uh, but they left this one here. The one I pulled out this morning, um, it was literally just the center part of the stalk. They ate everything else. Um, so as soon as we are done here with this live, I will probably actually go find some more milkweed to clean off and feed these guys in here to get them through the night. Let's move this guy back inside. Are you looking for another tasty leaf? What are the little black dots on the bottom? That's caterpillar poop. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to clean this out yet today. Again, that's I'm going to do that right after we're done here. I was running errands before this and I didn't get a chance to, uh, to do that before the live. Uh, but yes, they are messy. So I clean out. That's why I put paper towel on the bottom. So I will take all this paper towel out, put fresh paper towel, and then I'll go through the butterfly garden and find some of our milkweed. And then I wash it off because they, we get little yellow aphids. Actually, here's one right here. We get little yellow aphids like this. And they, they don't do anything to the caterpillars themselves, but they also eat the milkweed. So if the aphid numbers get out of control then they eat the milkweed that the caterpillars need so i wash all the aphids off and then give the uh the clean ba uh, the clean milkweed to the caterpillars any other questions i think i just answered the last two that were on there okay i don't know if we want to go can you take a look at the butterfly can garden? Go look at the butterfly garden, and then I have. I don't know. I can show them the stickers now. Yeah. Or we can show them the stickers. What do you have now? Why don't we do that? So, a part of um, our conservation work that we do here at the zoo, um, we are uh, we participate in the Monarch Watch tagging program. Um, this is through the University of Kansas, and so every year we uh, contact them, we and get little tags to put on the butterflies. So in two weeks, once the these guys up top emerge, we will gently take them out. We can tell whether they're boys or girls. The boys have these little pouches 
these like scent pouches on the insides of their wings and the females don't have that. Um, so that's how you tell them apart. But then we take these tiny little stickers and we stick them on their distal cell. So that's how, that's how small those are. So they're really small, lightweight stickers that have individual numbers on them. So, and then we release those butterflies into the wild for, like I said, these are the caterpillars that will be migrating all the way to Mexico. So when somebody finds a caterpillar with this number on it, they can go to the monarchwatchtag.org and they can type in this specific butterfly's number and they can track, and then that way they can track how far that butterfly migrated, um, and where they are going to. So we can go find... Oops. So we're gonna find some milkweed and stuff? Yeah, we're gonna go find some milkweed in our butterfly garden. So this is stuff that you guys can do um, here. I'm gonna close this so we don't have any escape artists while we're gone. So there are some things like, um, you you don't have to, my suggestion... This is, no this is a type of milkweed here, isn't it? Yes, but I I personally the, do not remember which kind. <laughs> there's a bunch of different types a, of milkweed. There are so let's go over types. where the let's go over to where we know this, there's some good milkweed. This one is a type of milkweed too. So there are things that you guys can do at home to help um, the monarch. Uh, oh, here we can go. Yeah, yeah, this is some good. That's stuff. That's where you're going. It's a ton of. Uh, grasshoppers and things like that flying Ooh. through here. That groundhog might be over there too. <laughs> I just saw him when I came back from lunch. We have a, we have a groundhog that's living in here. We have a giant groundhog that's moved into our, Here's some good our milk butterfly weed. garden. Yeah, so there are some things that you guys can do at home to help the monarch and other pollinators that are so important to our ecosystem. Um, and one of those things is to plant milkweed and to not spray herbicides and insecticides on there. While I'm out here, I'm gonna look for more caterpillars too. Okay. <laughs> one of the one of the problems is I don't know if it's a problem. Problem for the milkweed and the monarchs is as we've gone to some of the genetically modified crops that are resistant to things like Roundup. For example, I'm not picking on Roundup exactly, but <laughs> um, in case somebody works for Monsanto or something. But um, so they'll plant these corn crops or whatever. And then they'll spray the Roundup and it'll kill everything that's not the genetically modified corn, including all of this uh, milkweed and things like that. So it's just getting rid of all that um, habitat for the monarchs that they might have. There's a big old spider on that one. Where's he at? I, I exaggerated a little bit, but. He's cutie though. He is a cutie. There's a praying mantis right there. Oh, sweet. I'm trying to I have a nice reflection, so it's hard for me to see. There we go. Let's zoom in on him. That's cool. Little guy. So you find all sorts of other cool bugs when you're looking for caterpillars. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. <laughs> I love praying mantis. Um, There's another spider. Who let's see. I'm trying to... I'm sorry. I have agrash, <laughs> I think. So let's do the stickers harm the butterflies. No, they don't. So the, the university has specially designed those stickers. They're super lightweight. In fact, I, when I put them on the butterflies, I use a toothpick and that helps. Helps them getting it stuck to her finger. Help, yeah, it helps them not getting stuck to my finger. And then they can place it on the correct spot on the wing that it does not affect them um, as they migrate south. Do we but, see and there's ants on these. Do we have any aphids or anything? Just, um, I just see ants on this. All yeah. the aphids are on the other ones up there. Just looking for something else cool. Like, so when you play in a pollinator garden, you want to get butterflies, but like we saw, there's all sorts of other things. There's and all sorts of other things that the pollinators like as well. Yeah, here's Especially, some. Like, even if you've got, oh, well, there's some cool bugs in there. I wonder if, yeah, what's that? It's Lightning some sort bug? of beetle. Beetle. Yeah, I think. Um, that's part of the reason why we actually just ordered ladybugs to put in here because the aphids were getting so bad. Um, 
that we ordered ladybugs and that's one of the reasons ladybugs are so important to pollinators is because they eat the aphids. Big grasshopper. Look how big he is. all sorts of cool insects out here um, if you guys have even just a, like a small square of yeah, flower bed you can plant some milkweed or something yeah, and I've started the little pollinator gardener garden in my front yard and it's like three feet by six feet so I've got actually most of those caterpillars that we were looking at were found on my milkweed at my house we haven't been since planting but many caterpillars here. I think that's goldenrod. I'm not real great with the plants. Is everything here native, if I remember right? Uh for the most part, yes, I believe. Okay. I believe our conservation intern has gotten all of the non-native stuff out. He's, a, he's right in front of me. Did you find another beetle? Yeah, he's right there. Bright orange and black. Yeah, I'm not great with plants either. I just do the... Uh, Go run away. I just do the bug. <laughs> I like to find the caterpillars and raise them. Yeah, I don't see a whole lot. I don't see many butterflies today. No. We have had a whole bunch have around. A lot of, um... Oh, why am I blanking? We can go look at our butterflies. Let's go look at our butterfly sign over there. Okay. So oh, there's a little uh, toad. Let's see if I can get him. Where's he going, toad? Where's he? Oh, there's a toad. Oh, he's hopping there. away. I don't know if you guys can see our little toad friend. Another benefit to having a butterfly garden, you yeah, get native like toads and stuff. He's a little yellow. All this cool stuff just right here in the middle of Bloomington, you know? Okay. That we have over 40 native butterfly species here in Illinois, um, which which the we've had a lot of is it black swallowtails that we've had a, a lot of this year. I think so. A couple monarchs, but I th I think I've, it's these ones that those swallowtails that I've seen a lot of. Let's see the tiger red, swallowtail. Oh yeah, the eastern tiger swallowtail, and then we've I've had I've seen a couple of red animals as well. Over by the but wolves. But these are all natives. Yeah. There's a bunch of pipe vines, so we have a ton of pipe vine swallowtails over by the wolf yard. Yeah. If you're ever over there. Yeah. Let's see, you want to show them the pollinator. Uh -oh. The box that we made, the. So this is another simple, another simple thing that you can do to help uh, native insects. So native insects will burrow down into these wood pieces, um, especially this time of year to overwinter and things to shelter. So we literally just took, uh, I forget where this, oh, didn't this come from the gift shop? Yeah, this like, is something they were throwing is, away from the gift shop. This is something they were throwing away from the gift shop. They were changing some, up some, some displays. Barrel. And so it's this like old barrel that they were just gonna throw out and so we kind of repurposed it as an insect hotel. Yeah. You do so, have to be kind of careful with these and make sure you clean them out. Yeah, after so the... our yeah, our intern just put some new pieces of wood in here for the fall. Yeah. So it was super simple. He literally just took some scrap pieces of wood that we had from some fence posts. Like you may notice these is the fence posts from around the flamingo mm -hmm. exhibit. So he just took the ends and then drilled some holes into the end and then piled them up together yeah. in the barrel. Gives a nice little place for and the, sometimes the carpenter bees like it mm -hmm. and the big bumblebees. Yeah, all super important pollinators. Amanda wants to know if we've ever had problems with the monarchs hatching 
and then the spider lays the egg in it before it becomes the pupa, like the parasitial. Oh, yes. I have had that happen a couple times. Um, yes, there are a couple things that will prey on the smaller caterpillars, um, but a unique defense mechanism for the butterflies is that, like I said, those caterpillars spend two weeks solely eating the milkweed. Now there's a toxin in that milkweed that uh, builds up in that caterpillar's body. So like by the time they're, they're this big, there's, they're full of toxins because they've been eating milkweed for two weeks. Uh, and so luckily now the, the smart animals know, have learned that they don't taste great. Right. And so they won't eat these guys. And that, that toxin carries over when they become butterflies. The, the, that natural defense mechanism now is that animals have learned that monarch butterflies don't taste very good, and so they leave them alone. Right. And there's actually a butterfly called the viceroy that looks like a monarch. It right. kind of mimics it, but it doesn't have those toxins. But it looks enough like a monarch that other animals want to leave it alone yeah. and not bug it. Um, I think we've talked about it a little bit, but Cassie wants to know, can we talk about the chrysalis? How do they make it? What happens inside? Yeah, so it's, it's kind of, it's really neat actually. Um, so like I said, they spend about two weeks in caterpillar form, constantly eating the milkweed, and then they'll go up into the pupil stage, which is like what I think these four guys yeah, these up guys top are, are right just now. entering. So you can kind of see them, um, spinning a little bit of, it looks like web, but they will stick their, their, um, their butt <laughs> to the mesh up there. And then they will f drop their head down and form a little J. And then they will kind of wilt, I guess, um, and shed their skin one more time. And then the, the outside of it begins to harden. And that is what makes that beautiful green color stay in there don't come out and that hardens um and then it's like i feel like the, the caterpillar completely i don't know how to describe it it like co completely dissolves it turns to goo it, yeah it, it turns to like goop inside the once once the outside of it hardens the caterpillar like turns to goop and then it literally just starts transforming <laughs> yeah. into the butterfly Re and then reforms almost refor yeah that's a good word for it and then towards the end of so they're in that chrysalis for like 10 to 14 days and then you can kind of see, i don't know if you can see these pictures on the phone looks good from here so that's the hardened chrysalis that's that bright jade green color and then they've got like the gold stripes mm -hmm. like little gold stripes of, on the top there and then after about 10 to 14 days, it becomes, starts to become clear and you can start to see those beautiful orange and black wings. And then that's when it, it'll take, it takes several minutes sometimes. Um, they'll start breaking out of that clear. Once the chrysalis clears, it softens and they're able to come out. And if you see a monarch that has like wrinkly wet rings, it, wings, it probably just emerged. So then we wait a couple hours usually um, to wait for them to harden, their wings to soft or to dry off um, before we put that sticker on them and release them. And then we release them right here in the butterfly garden because they've got lots of pollinators, yeah, lots of plants to feed on before they migrate south. All right, so we want to come back in what, 10 days maybe or so? Yeah, hopefully we'll be able to come back in 10 days and we'll be able to show you, hopefully at this point, some of these these three or four that look like they're about ready to form a chrysalis maybe will we be should, ready to Maybe we get some pictures and kind of post them every once in a while. Like yeah, next week. They, they'll probably do it tonight while we're not here. But, of course they will, yep. Um, we'll get, if they, we can see them know, making like a I said, chrysalis. I was hoping they would do it last night. I saw some of them start crawling up top. They're still thinking we'll about it. We'll get some it. pictures and put them on here so yeah. you can kind of keep track. Stay in there. And then we'll be back next week. Yeah, we can guys we can give you uh, guys an update next week. Yeah. 
I'll don't. See. We won't have butterflies next week. It'll be too soon, but. I'll see if I can get some footage of those pipe vine swallowtails too. Over oh, in by the wolf yard, yeah. The wolf yard. But. So yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll come back in about 10 days, see these guys again, and next week we'll have a couple other yeah, and we'll, videos we for you guys to watch. Video. We can do a, a butterfly tag and release video. That would be cool. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Munching away. I'm hungry, you see yeah. that guy? Very hungry. Oh, I scared him. <laughs> So have a great rest, rest of the week. We're both having <laughs> trouble talking. Have a great rest of your it's week. It's almost the end of our week. <laughs> it is. Guess what? What? Monarch butt. Oh. <laughs> what? You know it's the end of our week when we're a little yep, slap happy. We are. So have a great rest of your week. We'll see you probably next Monday with another video. Yeah. We'll be in touch. But thanks for tuning in. Bye, guys.